Hello and welcome to Laundry Basket Quilt's quilting window. Today we will create an applique block using applique silhouettes, fabric for our background and wonderful threads to finish the edges. What we're going to do is first choose the block. I have chosen from the Spring Bouquet Master Kit and the block I have chosen is block number one. What we need is the pattern. We take the pattern and uh, cut it right here on a line. Then using a tape, we stick it so we have a full layout to lay our pieces in the right places. This is our pattern. I like to use my sewing table as my light table. To do that, so, I use a small light turn it on and put under my table. I take my fabric and square it up to the right size. We need a 16 and a half by 16 and a half square to lay our pieces on it. That's the size for that particular block. Let's lay this right down on our layout. Make sure that when you're laying your fabric you uh, position the fabric so the pieces are at least half an inch away from the edges because later on when you sew your block you will take quarter inch for your seam allowance so you want to be at least quarter inch away from the edges after the block is sewn together. It's, it does help to turn down the light outside if you have a light under the table. Let's open our block. You have three bags. One has flowers, another one has leaves, branches and a bird. Let's start up with our branches. I pull them out of the bag and our bird of course. And what I like to do is I peel the bag from the fusible shapes and then position exactly where it's supposed to go using the layout that it's right in the back there. Alright, this looks great. Our little birdie is sitting on a branch and he has a great little leaf. Let's move into some stems. I'm going to start up with the straight one. Again, peel the uh, paper off, lay my branch up just like that and position exactly where it's supposed to go. You're going to notice something about the fusible shapes. They are perfectly cut with a laser and also they are having a slightly sticky back to it what help position them in the right places. I like to crease the edge and that helps me to peel the paper away nice and easy. Just like this. Next shape. Uh, um, branch let's see all oh, that looks so good this is gonna be a beautiful block this is so much easier than gardening outside those flowers grow quickly and I look at it exactly where I finish up and I can trim it if I need to and put that little piece to the side let's see another one and another one that's what I'm going to do so all of those branches that I have, they're like S-shaped branches, what I do is section them to the exact section to fill up all the areas to have a wonderful, wonderful branches for my block number one. I pay attention to the dotted lines, so that way I position the pieces that have a dotted line under the pieces that have a straight line. The dotted line means that the pieces are all overlapping each other. So this is what I will be doing for a little bit. Starting, like I said, with the branches, going into the flowers, then placing my beautiful low leaves underneath, placing one after the other, just like that, painting with my fabrics and enjoying my silhouettes layouts. When I finish my branches, I will do some leaves. Let me open the leaves right now just to show you how fun that is. 
Oh, and with the leaves, you have the big blue petals. Look at this, how quickly I'm going to create a flower. I'm creasing the edge just like that, putting my fingers and peeling the paper away. And now positioning my uh, petals. If you're not sure about the colors, where to put them, which piece go where, use the front cover, uh, right here, the front cover of the quilt as your guide for the colors, where the shading of blue, where the pink goes, where the lighter, where the darker is. Or just use your own instinct and enjoy yourself. You can always take the petals and place everything in place, shuffle them around a little bit. This is the second one, third one. I'm enjoying myself and putting all the pieces in the right position on my background. Peeling the paper away and just laying my pieces in the right places, one after the other. I hope you're having as much fun to do so. Notice again, I'm crinkling the edge, but just making a nice crease and then slipping in the right position following the layout that um, I have from my pattern. If sometimes things are sliding, maybe using um, a clips would be a good idea. And I love those clips. They are great for binding but I like to use them to just hold my things in place. So what I can do is I put it on the edges and that way my fabric doesn't slide on my layout. So that helps. Any help is great and we want to enjoy ourselves as we are making our block of the month. So, oh, this is looking so nice. Colors are wonderful. Make sure you stay at least half an inch away from the edge because later on you're going to stitch and put your block into the quilt and you're going to need a half a, a quarter inch for a seam allowance. So another leaf and another leaf. Fusible applique is so much fun. I love it. I think it's just like a making a puzzle, you're putting all the pieces back where it's supposed to and then the results come up where you can see the whole picture and how fun it looks. So another one. If you want to move some things and places where it appeals to your eye, it is your block. You're free to do wherever you would like to with it. I do like to guide you with the full layouts Patterns for the spring bouquet have the full layouts. All that you do is tape in the middle to get that 16 and a half by 16 and a half block done. And let's find all our pieces. Make sure you're placing the leaves under the branches so they look like they are coming right from under there. Now we have a few more small leaves. If you need to, you can take your light, our light, and move it around so that way you can see it better where the pieces need to be positioned. So another one. Oh, we have another low branch. Let's place that where it's supposed to be. Usually takes uh, uh, 20 minutes to a half an hour to place all your pieces in the right places but after that the fun begins and you get to stitch around the edges but let's not rush this is all about enjoying yourself and having fun and i love that the shape have this little bit of a sticky to it the fusible webbing is slightly sticky because you can place your pieces and they don't move they don't slide it really works great so we have another wonderful leaf and another one. Oh, and let's put this lovely petal. Oh, I love those blues. They are so bright, so beautiful. This block of the month really is, has the most wonderful colors. I um, love the rainbow colors and the rainbow collection of the cheeks and also the threads to go with it. It really makes a nice group to play with it and get a really nice vibrant look to your quilt. So that is my center. I'm gonna look at my layout 
and place that right here. Oh my, this piece needs to be just a little bit more to the right. Let me see. Now I got it in the right place. This one. Okay. And our stem needs to be under that. Oh, that's wonderful. Okay, we want to cover all the raw edges, have our flowers look great. We have some moa leaves. They're small, but they're all important for the whole picture. And we have another a big leaf that we want to put it on. So that's something I like to do and enjoy my afternoon of applying. Having the pieces pre-cut by laser, just crease the edges just like that, peel it away and you are ready to place it where it's supposed to go. Pay attention to some of the colors that you have lights and darks and variety and the shading and have fun, fun, fun with it. Another one. Oh, I'm gonna put this color here. I think that's gonna look fun next to this bird. And lighter one on a tip. Oh, look at how fun. This little leaf got a little design right on it. That is beautiful. Let's get another one right next to it. Look how fast this goes. I'm just pushing gently with my finger to make sure that they're sticking to the background fabric. And uh, when you're peeling, make sure you just peel the paper and have the fusible webbing stuck right to it. I'm paying attention to the color. I like the brown and just really, really nice. This is looking great. The next step will be our flowers. Let's open the bag with the flowers. It's right here. That's the smallest bag. And now also the circles. When you take pieces out of the bag, make sure you don't drop any of them on the floor. And if by any chance, any of your pieces are missing from your uh, package, please don't hesitate. Just email us or call us and we're gonna make sure we send you anything that it's missing and uh, so you can enjoy your project to the fullest. Now we're going for our beautiful flowers. I'm still paying attention to that full layout that I told you uh, to the uh, front cover picture just to look at some of the colors, how I placed it in my first quilt and have fun with it. So I need a light one, I need a little bit darker one and the uh, colors that you see on the front cover, all the fabrics are the exact same fabrics so that way it's easy to repeat it, have the same kind of look to your block so you don't get a, a surprise. We want all the fun surprises. We don't want a surprise that is not fun. And another beautiful, look how that pink just adds like a sparkle into it. How cool, and we have one more pink flower right here. Let's follow that layout that we can see right through the table using that light. Did you see how quickly we created our own glass table, light table that we can work on it? Now we have some beautiful yellows and oranges and they are going to add a sparkle into the quilt. This one goes right here in the center. Perfect. Then we have a low circles that's gonna go on our pink flowers. I position them slightly farther. If you do not know where to put them, lift away, look at the layout, and then you will recognize where they need to go on your quilt, on your flowers. Another one, and another one, and we are almost done with our block and we're gonna proceed into our second step what is pressing all the shapes in place and another one that's our medium size one and that one i'm gonna look at the layout just to check where it's supposed to be oh yes a little bit onto the top right here 
there's nothing wrong with double checking what's going on and look at this we have just finished our first block and it looks just wonderful ready to go and press I will see you in a moment and show you how to use your iron and press our pieces in place thank you Hello and welcome back. We just finished placing all our pieces onto the background. Now it's time to fuse them in place. Let's remove the clips that have been holding our layout so it would not slide as we were placing our pieces. Now we're gonna take the layout out, put it to the side, place our uh, block on an ironing surface just like this one. I create this board for myself. It's just a board and I have a piece of flannel wrapped around it. It's perfect to press and applicate blocks, as square blocks. I turn my iron on. Make sure you do not have any water in your iron. The steam is not good for fusible webbings. Also set your iron on a cotton setting. You don't want your iron too hot. Try your iron on the side just to make sure that it's nice and warm and now start fusing your pieces in place by placing the iron on the top and gently sliding to the side making sure that all of the pieces are secure and fusing to the background. Oh, this is looking so wonderful right now. All the pieces are just like melting beautifully into the background and they're just wonderful to get prepared for our next step what it's going to be stitching around to applicate okay oh this looks great and i don't keep my iron too long you do not want to over press you really don't if you need to, you can press it twice, but if you press it too hard and your, surf, uh, and your pieces, uh, the fusible webbing melt too much, then it's going to become really stiff and hard to stitch over. And we don't want them. We want them nice and stuffed and wonderful, so we enjoy ourselves when we're stitching around it. Our block is completely fused in place and now ready for the next step, what would be zigzag around the edges. I hope to see you soon. Get prepared for your next step. It's time to stitch around our applique. We're going to use a cotton thread in a bobbin, nylon invisible thread in a top, and a needle in our sewing machine. You can use an embroidery needle if you would like to, or Macrotex needle. A friend recommended that one, and it works very well. This one is 70 over 10, and that's what I have in my sewing machine at this moment. It does make a pleasant experience. When you put your uh, nylon invisible thread to your sewing machine. Make sure you adjust the tension on the top of your sewing machine. That tension should be just about on one. Depends on a sewing machine. That would allow you to stitch with it and don't bring up any of the bobbin thread up and create low dots through your applique. So pay attention to that. You can also use cotton thread in the top of the sewing machine if you do not want to use the nylon invisible thread. When you're using cotton thread, you can use a zigzag, blanket stitch or button stitch. I'm going to show you some examples in just a moment. Let's try this nylon invisible thread. I love the Orville one or the Sew Art one for my stitching. So now I'm going to find an area in my block that I'm going to start up with it. Later on, I'm going to come back to that area once I go all the way around and I will stitch over just about quarter inch to lock the stitches in place. Make sure when you are a beginner to slower the speed on your sewing machine. You do not want to go too fast because you want to have some time to enjoy it and also have time when you have to go around the curves. 
Needle position on your sewing machine should be down. That way when you stop and have to lift the foot of your sewing machine, that needle will hold the spot when you just finish stitching. So foot down now and let's fun begin. We're stitching around the edges of the applique, making sure that most of the zigzag is over the applique. Only one needle width is on the side of your applique onto the background. Stop, needle position down, lift and turn, and we're gonna go around the leaf. Stop, needle position down, and turn, and we're having fun stitching around our applique. Needle down, lift and turn, and we are coming to the tip of the leaf. When you come to the tip of the leaf, make sure that the needle is on to the outside of the applique on the right side, and needle position down, foot up and let's keep on going. You want to keep the needle down and lift the foot up when you're turning. You don't want to move your block by just turning like this because that stretches your applique and does not look good. You want to take your time and stop, lift and turn and so and stop and lift and turn. We're back onto the stem, enjoying ourselves, making sure that every edge of the applique has a small zigzag on it that will hold the applique in place and protect it and help from fraying. So as you go around it, it looks wonderful. You're enjoying yourself and taking your time. Your zigzag should look just like this from the back. Just a small zigzag. Later on, when you finish all of the pieces, you will pull all the threads to the back, back, flip your block to the back and press it. Your block will be ready for setting into the quilt. There is other way to finish the, uh, the applique. Like I mentioned to you, you can use a cotton thread and you can use blanket, button stitch or zigzag as well with it. Let's look at my block for a moment that I'm working on it and I'm using a wonderful blanket stitch around the edges. I just finished my greens. Whenever I finish a, a leaf, there are some threads on the top that have to be pulled in to the back. And I already started that. Let me show you this one more time this way. Oh, see, those are right here. I have pulled them to the back and lay them on. I'm going to weave them into the uh, back of the stitches so that way they stay right here in place. Every time you proceed into a different shapes, you will switch the colors of the threads, like the brown branches. You have a wonderful brown or maybe those gorgeous pinks and reds could be an accent for your flowers. Once the block is completed, again, flip it to the back, pull all the threads and press it and prepare for setting into your quilt. Your blocks will be sewn together, then the inner border of little patches will come around them and then it's time to begin appliquing your outer border. You will cut a strip of fabric uh, then section that into four sections. That would be the four borders for your spring bouquet applique quilt. I hope you have enjoyed visiting with me and learning a little bit about fusible applique. Come again and visit Quilting Window from Laundry Basket Quilts. Goodbye!